I absolutely hate the phrase reasonably practicable. It's so dense, isn't it? Practicable is not a word which we use. Reasonable is just vague, subjective. And a lot of courses where we teach this, actually we don't teach it accurately of what it actually means. Most courses um, basically just require you to explain that it's cost versus benefits. And if the cost of the risk control exceeds the benefits of doing it, then it's not a reasonable thing to do. That's actually not true. <laughs> That's not true at all. If you read the case law on this, which is decades old, the, the definition of reasonably practicable includes the phrase grossly disproportionate. And it says, uh, roughly speaking, it says that if the control measure is grossly disproportionate to the benefits of doing it, uh, then, then that's not a reasonable thing to do. Grossly disproportionate. Now, again, the word disproportionate, most people struggle with that word. It's a big word. So I'm going to use a different phrase. I'm going to say over the top. And instead of grossly, I'm going to say way. Way over the top. That's what, that's what the case law means. If the benefits of the risk control, sorry, if the costs of the risk control, so if the cost of the solution that you're trying to implement, if the cost of the solution is way over the top compared to the benefits of doing it, then it's not a reasonable thing to do. Now, what does this mean in practice? Well, this is a tricky bit. The tricky bit is, it means if it's, if it's over the top compared to the benefits, but not way over the top, just, just a bit over the top, just a bit, legally, you still have to do it. You're required to do everything reasonably practicable and it's unreasonable if it's way over the top. But if it's just a bit over the top, <laughs> what well, is a reasonable thing for you to do? And what does it mean in practice? Well, it means in practice, it's not just a simple cost benefit analysis. It means that a lot more controls than you think are actually considered to be reasonable under the legislation. The law actually requires you to go a bit too far, not way too far a bit too far. So when people say to you, this is useful for safety professionals, by the way, if people say to you, ask, oh, it goes a bit too far, doesn't it? That's a bit over the top, don't you think? It's a bit over the top. Well, we've got to do it then. <laughs> got to do it. As long as it's not way over the top, <laughs> you know, in which case we wouldn't have to do it. But despite all this, I do find the whole phrase a little bit irrelevant to some extent, because, you know, first of all, it's subjective as hell because you can't quantify the benefits of risk reduction very well. You can use a risk matrix, but let's face it, those things are just nonsense risk matrices half the time. It's just a subjective assessment of risk. It's nothing, there's nothing true about it. It's just, a, it's just your, your perception. So it's, you can't quantify the reduction in risk unless you're using some kind of quantitative method, which most of us don't. So how do we decide if something's reasonable? Well, simply put, there's another way of looking at it. It's reasonable to do what other people in your industry do to fix this problem. It's reasonable for you to copy the best standards or the common standards, the industry standards. It's reasonable for you to follow the government guidance. Now, if you look at ACOPS, Approved Codes of Practice, if you can show that you complied with the relevant ACOP when you're being prosecuted, you will successfully show that you did everything reasonable. And it's not just ACOPS though, it's also the HSG guidance documents. So not just HSG guidance documents, it's industry guidance, industry codes of practice. So I know full well that HSE inspectors are serving improvement notices on organizations for not implementing um, HSG guidance standards or industry guidance standards. You know, if, you, if, if, if they're for example, you've got the, what is it called? The National Association of Scaffolders or something like that. I can't remember, or is it the National Scaffolding Confederation? NASC, they've got a guidance document on how to erect scaffolding. It's a code of practice. It's an industry code of practice. It's not law, it's not legally required in any way. And so, you know, you'd think that following that would be completely optional. Well, not so according to the HSE, as far as they're concerned, it is reasonable for you to adopt the standard practices on how to erect scaffolding within the scaffolding industry. So if the HC catch you erecting scaffolding in a dodgy way, that's not compliant with that code of practice, then they're going to serve an improvement or probably in that case, a prohibition notice on you. Um, and so there we are, reasonably practicable. It's kind of pointless as a phrase nowadays. Basically, just do what other people do um, and do what the guidance in your industry says.
And that's that. If you do that, then in theory, you've done everything reasonably practicable.